the economic cycle. The economic cycle shows the fluctuations in an economy. An economy tends to move through different stages over a period of time. An economy is measured typically by its GDP or gross domestic product. Gross domestic product or GDP is a measure that shows the level of output in an economy. An economy is typically made up of money flowing through a circle. Consumers are spending the money on products and services which they have usually earned through a wage and these products and services are normally produced by a business. The more the consumer spends the larger businesses tend to become as they look to employ more people. This starts to see an increase in the output of an economy. This in a cycle creates more jobs and it will create more investment and the economy continues to grow in size. So the economy tends to follow a cycle which looks something like this graph that I'm showing you now. So as you can see the economy tends to grow and then it will start to slow down before it gets a bit smaller and then it will start to grow again and the same cycle will follow all over again. What we're going to do is look at each of the different stages of the economic cycle. Notice that the general trend is actually an upwards trend. So if you were to draw a trend line, notice that the economy actually over time is continually growing. However, the economy doesn't grow in a straight line. Notice the economy has these periods of growth and also these periods when it starts to shrink. So there's a little question for you to think about and a good time to pause the video. Why do you think that the economy does not continue to grow in a straight line? To help you, think about what an economy would need if it was to continue growing endlessly. You may want to pause your video now while you jot down some answers. Let's look at the answer. An economy starts growing when it runs out of resources that enable it to grow. These are what we call factors of production. Now, the factors of production are four different things that we can run out of. We could run out of a physical availability of land. So a country or an economy could run out of land that actually could be used to build on and develop. Remember we have brownfield and greenbelt land. And clearly you can't just build all over the greenbelt unless the government's going to change its policy. Which goes into our pestle factors, one of the other videos you can find on YouTube. Another factor you may find is labour that we run out of. You may run out of the physical number of workers to actually work in your business. This is when the economy gets to what we call full capacity. So your unemployment will be exceptionally low and you can't really find any more skilled workers to do the jobs that are required. You could run out of physical money to be able to expand your business or grow your business. Maybe the banks will start to cut back on the amount of money you can borrow. Or there's a level of funders just cut back that you can actually access. And last but not least, you may live out of enterprise, people coming up with the ideas, leading the vision to drive the growth in the economy. So that's why an economy doesn't continue to grow. However, the first stage that we're going to look at today is growth in the economy. Notice growth is highlighted clearly by the arrows here. This is the stage where the economy is starting to increase in size. Growth. This is where people are feeling happier. And because they're feeling happier, they're starting to spend more money. They have more money to spend because they've got a job. The economy at this point is starting to look upwards. When people have got more money and they've got more jobs, they go out and spend money. Spending money means that shops are more inclined to increase prices. Because they increase prices, this starts to increase inflation. To slow this down, the Bank of England starts to increase interest rates. By increasing interest rates, they give you more of an incentive to save because savers will get more back on the money that they've got in the bank. At the same time, anybody with a mortgage or a loan will have to pay more money back. This will reduce the amount of disposable income that they've got available, thus slowing down the ability to spend money. Because we're in a phase where people are feeling happier and there's more money around, the government is more likely to increase taxes or at least collect more money back in taxes because this is an ideal time to swell and grow the government coffers. Okay, after growth, we start to reach a stage of the economy, which is called boom. This is where the economy is nearing full capacity. Remember what we said about our facts of production. 
we are running out of resources to use at this point. Now, in the boom stage, people are exceptionally happy. Because they're really happy, they are spending vast sums of money. There is a very low level of unemployment at this point. People are in employment. The economy is nearing full employment. Because people are spending, inflation is high. At this point now, the interest rates will be at their highest point, again, to try and slow this inflation down. The Bank of England at this point will be trying to bring inflation down to that 2% target the government in the UK sets. In the boom, this is when inflation and interest rates will be at the highest. Also, at this point, the government should be collecting its largest amount of taxes. Because after the boom, after we've reached that peak, the economy starts to enter what we call recession. Recession is a stage where the economy is shrinking in size. It's starting to get smaller. In recession, people are starting to feel more concerned, more worried than they were in boom. And because they feel worried, because they feel concerned, they start to cut back on the amount of money they spend. They start to save money. When people aren't spending money, this forces companies to lay off workers and also look to retrench, to get a little bit smaller, to survive what they know is this recession period it may go on for a few months, maybe in a few years. So they start to cut back. Because people aren't spending money and they start to save money, inflation starts to fall. Now, this is where the Bank of England wants to increase spending because it wants to try and limit the damage that a recession can do to the economy. So to try and encourage some spending, it will start to reduce the interest rates. This means you get less back for your savings. But if you've got a mortgage or you've got a loan, you also pay less back on the money you borrow, which means you have slightly more disposable income to hopefully go out and spend. At this point now, the government may start to cut the amount of tax it collects off people, or also start to spend and create jobs in the public sector. Again, try and create some work, try and create that feel-good factor, because that is how you get out of recession. And then last but not least, the final stage is the slump. This is the lowest point the economy has shrank to. At this point now, though, things will start to look up after this point. Things will start to turn. But in the slump itself, people are mostly worried and concerned. This is the point where they're at the lowest ebb. They feel that they have got no prospects in the future, so they are starting to cut back. They really are now not spending money. At this point now, companies are laying off workers. However, saying that, some companies are starting to see that things may be turning. They may be feeling there's a bit more confidence in the long term. So some businesses will start to invest. And one of the main advantages of that is because borrowing is cheap. Because at the point where people aren't spending money, inflation is low, and inflation is now at its lowest point, to increase spending, the Bank of England has lowered interest rates to probably their lowest point. But at the same time as we know, this makes borrowing really cheap, which is really good for businesses that want to invest in the future. If they can see the government has reduced the amount of tax at the moment and they are trying to create lots of jobs, they can be, feel that the economy is about to grow in the future. And as a result of this, they will start to invest. They will start to borrow money. It's a good time to borrow money in a slump because you know what's going to come after the slump. The economy will start to grow again. And that is the economic cycle. What I'd like to do now is download the table from the link below and try to complete the requirements at each of the stages of the economic cycle. As you can see in the table here, it's asking you basically to look at these different factors over on this side here, and then consider how they might impact on a boom, a recession, a slump, and the recovery or the growth stage, we call it. Okay, once you completed this lesson, you should now be able to identify and explain the different stages of the economic cycle. You may want to check your answers with one of the example links that are provided below or with somebody else in the class that you're with. Finally, don't forget to give me a follow on Twitter or on the YouTube channel. And remember, you can tweet any area of business that you want me to cover in the future.